Lance Mechanics here today and I got another tool review video for you. Uh, don't mind the hair, it's a hot one here in the shop. And what I got here is the VR200. It's a power probe and circuit breaker finder. Uh, I've been playing with it for quite a bit. Uh, I've tested it underground, I have it on surface and here I'm just gonna do a simple little demo here for you today. Uh, we're gonna try it here on the razor and uh, do simple testing and you can see if you like it or not and you can decide if you wanna buy one. So I'm not new to the world of uh, power probes. Like I do have power probes. I've used them religiously for the last 15 years. They're a, an amazing tool for troubleshooting, but they can also be very dangerous in uh, an inexperienced hands. And I will talk about that later in the video. Uh, for now, let's get into it. So here's the case it comes in. Uh, you'll be able to open it up and see, here's your power probe. You got the circuit breaker. It's got uh, two ways to power it up. And here's an uh, extension cable. You can do it through the 12 volt uh, thingy here. I got it hooked up to the battery right now and I don't have this extension cable on. So that's what you're, well, that's what I'm doing. So it did come with instructions. I have since lost them, but don't worry. They're on Google. You can search them. You can find them on the site. It's no biggie. So let's go through some features right here. Obviously you can do voltage. Let's see if we can get some glare here. And to move it over, you hit the red button right here and it'll change the screens. You got your mins and maxes. You could do resistance and a diode check. And down here is where you can turn it off. So I have it on one, that's off. Do there, off, screen goes off. So the second button is for the circuit breaker testing. You put it here and you see nothing on your screen, but you'll have a signal going through the wet red wire here. And let me show you, I'll power this up, uh, it's backwards. When you hold the button, you'll hear this staticky noise. But if you come near the wire, That's how you do it. And we're gonna show you in the video how to properly do it. I'm gonna test the range at which this will uh, trigger. Cause you know, in modern vehicles, huge bundles of wires and it's it's tricky, but it, this this will help you out. You'll, you'll understand more as I go. So here's the leads I have hooked up right now and they're on my battery in the razor. And rule one with electrical testing, I'm always gonna do this in a video is put a battery charger or maintainer on it. Cause Low voltage will send you down the garden path. Rule one, I will always reiterate this in every video. So right now I'm at the front of the razor and I'm gonna show you some facts about vehicles that uh, some people may or not, may not know. Uh, so with the key off right now, you're not gonna have power, but you're still gonna have grounds. So this is something people should be checking when your vehicle's off. So as you can see here, I have a ground right to battery, but I have no power and it's indicating that. And this is the winch section here. We'll just pull that off. Oh, okay, apparently I have power there full time. Interesting, <laughs> go Polaris. <laughs> so I just looked further, they run power to a relay. So if I wanted to see there, I wouldn't have power past that. Uh, I just That's just a junction box. So yeah, we're gonna have power there. I thought it was the other way around. Uh, yeah, so now let's actually turn on the power and let's see. All right, keys on, I should have voltage here and it's gonna seem a little high, but I do have a battery charger on there. Still have my ground and still have my main power going to the circuit. So there's two options on here. One is you can supply a ground and the other is you can supply power. Um, a lot of times I will always supply a ground on a circuit if I know it's on the ground side, that's very simple to do. It won't damage components. But if you're trying to supply power to ECMs, modules, this is where it can get dangerous. My recommendation is the only time you're supplying power is on a solenoid and it's uh, disconnected from the circuit and you supplied your own ground. I think that's the best way to test it. Uh, some technicians may disagree. Um, that's the best way to not damage components until you get more proficient with a very dangerous tool like this. And I will always say they are very dangerous and I'll do some bench testing to show you. So here's where I really wanna do the video. Uh, so on the front of a Razor Polaris, you have this connector right here. What this is, is your DLC port. But what a lot of people don't realize is this is a uh, CAN bus. It's uh, using automotive uh, language. Uh, I think it's J1937. And basically you're gonna have a CAN high, a CAN low, a power and a ground. Um, with the vehicle not running, it should be roughly five volts total across both the CAN pins. And we're gonna check that. And then you're just gonna have one power, one ground. There may be an extra power here. That may be a, a Polaris protocol, but we'll go through it. So I got my pinouts here and we're gonna go to the first one here. Uh, 2.3, this thing isn't running by the way. And 2.3, so 
It should total five, but it, again, it's not running. I'll fire this up and confirm, but that's gonna be either my can high or can low. I'd have to figure it out with a little more testing. Um, the pin on the bottom right corner was a ground and these two are powers. So let's get into it. So I got it running. One's gonna drop down to one point something and one will keep going up to 3.2. So the far right pin's my can high and this is probably gonna be my can low. Look up on, yeah, so it's dropping down below 2.3. So that's good, we figured that out. All right, so now we're gonna test the circuit breaker finder. Because this is the end of a circuit, it's technically an open. So you can run your line from your power probe right to here, the red one. And the screen's on right now, so we're gonna flip this to the circuit breaker mode and turn this on. Now you'll hear the, it's working. I could turn it up. So, as we go right here, you'll hear it. And right to here. So, let's see how f good it is. I hear it down there. Let's see if we can hear it through plastic. That should be the uh, main thing. Okay, can you hear it over here? It's impressive. Let's see if we can hear anything back here. Actually, let's come to here because I know where all the circuits are on this. Nothing. It's in that harness, okay. Nothing there. There, found the junction, okay. So, there, I'll keep it here. There, it's back here. I already know where it's going because it's a CAN bus, but this is kind of, you'll get better with this. So, right here's the ECM on these. And it's in there. So if we were to follow this reverse, you'd come up here, you'd follow it, you'd keep following it, following it, following it until you found your open. That's how you use one of these. So that little test was a little rushed, I will admit it, but my years in the career, or like my years as a career technician, I never, I could never fathom how many people didn't have a tool like that and they didn't take the time to trace a circuit through the vehicle. Instead, they'll get their multimeter out, they'll confirm that it's an open circuit, it'll read OL, but they didn't have a tool like this where they could slowly trace where it is and find an open in a circuit. And uh, for the hundreds of dollars you could spend to save you thousands at the end of the year losing your shirt, it just never made sense to me. So I will do further testing with these in future videos to show people how simple it is. And we'll go from there, but I always recommend you need circuit break it for, uh, circuit finders where the brakes are, and it's, it's an invaluable tool. So yeah, back to the right. So we're gonna switch this over to ohms. You just keep hitting the button. There you go. Anyways, it's OL. So this thing's off. Uh, for those who are automotive enthusiasts, I'm about to test the CAN network, but it doesn't have 120 ohm resistor in the circuit because it's only one module. So whatever we're gonna resistance we're gonna see is what's in the module itself, and. 6.7 on the can high and can low, so pretty simple. We'll check the ground, it should be zero effectively. Nothing, and because we're not powered up, we may see, this one's gonna be, well, let's throw it on a power circuit. It's gonna show OL. This one might not. Yeah, so that's through a switch and through a module, that's normal. Don't read the end of that. So yeah, power should always be OL. It's something you're gonna learn over time and ground should be zero. That's how you do your voltage test or your ground check. But sometimes resistance isn't enough because if you have the slightest little wire strand there, it will still read zero. So don't have a confirmation that you have a perfect ground. <laughs> so I have something special for you here. As Sheldon Cooper would say, Radio Shack is the greatest thing ever. I've had this for years and I bought it for two reasons. For those who don't know, this is a resistant, resistors, different various uh, ohmages. And I bought this because I used to work on a lot of Chevys and you could bypass a bad ignition module or sorry, a key signal by putting a resistor in there. And what it would do is it would fake the key signal and it would allow you to start the vehicle. And it was a way cheaper option than spending like $1,800 for a new ignition. Uh, I used it three times, saved some customers some money. But yeah, we're gonna use this for testing and see how accurate this is. All right, so the package we grabbed this resistor out of is K and that's 10 kilo ohms. So we're gonna put this on here, get this in a good position and see what it reads. 9.6, 9.6, 9.6, 9.6, 9.6, 9.6, 9.6, 9.6, 9.6, 9.6, 9.6, 9.6, 9.6, 9.6, 9.6, 9.6, 9
So for those who don't know, most uh, multimeters and tools have a 5% variance. This seems like it's at the max of 5%. We're gonna grab my multimeter and just confirm how accurate it is. I got my Innova multimeter here. I've had this for years. I believe in its accuracy and here it is hooked up and slightly different. Again, all multimeters have that 5% inaccuracy when doing uh, homage tests. So it's doing good. I'm not complaining. It's very close. So 10K, I could probably, no, 10K is the biggest one on here. So we uh, checked the max, at least, oh no, I have a 100K ohm resistor. Let's try. I got the 100K ohm resistor. Uh, my multimeter reads 97.7K ohms. Let's see what this does. Oh, get the raw footage. Reads 100K exactly. Interesting. Well, there we go. So do you need a multimeter or a power probe to be accurate at 100K ohms? I don't think so. Usually it's zero to 100, maybe two, 300. Anything outside of that range, in my opinion, is just, you don't need it. So just letting you know it, 100K is, seems to be very accurate compared to my multimeter. So the next thing I wanna check is it does have a bit of a graphing feature. And the best way to see graphs, I think, is trying it on CAN network. So we both, we've already established CAN high, CAN low, so it's not running right now. We'll see what data we get. We know it's communicating, and I gotta see the graph here. It's giving me a min and a max and a one kilohertz frequency. Uh, the frequency usually on CAN networks, I believe is 60 a second. So we see it's reading there. Let's see what CAN low does. Oh. So CAN low dropping below the graph a little bit, maybe because I moved it. But yeah, see right here, the simple test. I know which one's CAN low and CAN high. So let's get it running and see if what changes. All right, it's running now and you can see our maxes are a little higher up on the graph. And she's going up to three on the can high and our frequency that went a little up. So let's check can low. There we go. Yeah, you can see the difference. Um, is it, I don't like how fast the graph is moving, but it helps you a little bit. It'll just kind of help uh, troubleshooting move on. All right, time for my honest opinion here. For the price, this is a fantastic tool. Uh, I, I lean into more heavily expensive tools, but for the price, this will get all the people at home through troubleshooting. This will get apprentices, get, it'll get them through the day. It's a great tool to start with. Um, they do have higher versions. This is the low end one they sent me and it's already doing pretty good. I'm looking forward to the higher end one they sent, they'll send, it has a touch screen on it. But for the price, I, I, I will say it's very good for the price. Uh, when I bought my Power Pro 10 years ago, I paid a pretty penny for it. And the fact that you're getting these for under $120 now, Canadian is fantastic. So uh, post in the comments what you think. I was all over this video. I'm just doing what I would normally do. Uh, I pull these tools out quite often for troubleshooting. Now that they have a uh, graphing in it, an homage, and it does have a diode feature Am I ever gonna use that diode checker? Probably not. I've never used it on my uh, multimeter, so I skip, apologize. But uh, leave a comment what you think in the video and Lance Mechanics, have a good one.